Welcome once again to another episode of Ask the Techies. I'm D. Lee Beard, and today I'm going to talk to you about speech recognition software, not only for computers, you might have heard about that, but it's also available on your mobile devices as well. First off, let's talk a little bit about some of the software that's available that you can put on your PC or your Mac. And basically the company that makes that happen is Nuance. Nuance makes Dragon naturally speaking modules, and if you take a look there for the PC, they have different options in here. There's a standard, a professional, a medical one, a legal one, so it can recognize medical terms. So if you're saying deoxyribonucleic acid, it might know how to spell that properly. And um, there's other ones in here for the PC. For the Mac, there's also software for the Mac, and that's what I'm going to demonstrate for you today using Mac Speech software that I have right here in the box. And there's a legal and a medical and an international one, different versions in there that might be the best solution for you. You can click on those and learn more about each one and see how much each one costs. Um, but Max Spe Speech Dictate is uh, $199 for physical shipment. Now, what do you get in the box for that? Well, you get the software. Uh, you get the box. <laughs> uh, you get a nice little card that tells you some commands that you can give to it. And you also get a uh, headset with a microphone that has a USB plug that you put on it. Basically, you just plug this in plug the headphones into this little uh, USB adapter. So it's kind of nice because you can use this for other purposes as well. So it includes the hardware. Click that in there. It has everything you need to, to make it work. And you pop this on and get ready to talk, adjust it. You want this thing to probably be down a little bit low, a little bit like this, not rubbing up against your beard, <laughs> but off to the side a little bit. Uh, so it can be able to pick you up. And then what you do is you launch the Mac Speech software you, after you've installed it. And I'm going to launch it right here, Max Speech Dictate. And the first thing you want to do is uh, set up a profile. Now, in this case, I've already set up a profile. But the neat thing about this is that you can set up multiple profiles. So you can have one for you, one for your wife, one for your grandma, one for the kids. Uh, multiple people can use this with different accounts. So you can even have this in a lab environment where you have the software in here with multiple uh, sets of profiles based upon certain people's speech patterns. Because it does customize it, and it gets smarter. So the first thing you do when you launch it is you create a profile and you talk, you read some text that it gives you, and that helps to customize it to your voice to recognize your speech patterns based upon what it knows the text is supposed to be. But in this case, I'm just going to choose the one that I've got and uh, click that, make active. Now you can adjust the mic input and it works with most applications, you know, Word, email, iChat for doing uh, instant messaging. That's a choice for you as well. It does have a little dictate box window that you can use to uh, recognize what you're saying. There's a little floating window over here on the right. I don't know if you see this, but I'll pull this up here so you can see it better. But this allows you to uh, turn it on or off. Right now it's in the off mode, as you can tell by the universal stop sign uh, icon that it's got there. It's fairly accurate and it's a huge hand wrist saver because it doesn't mean you have to type quite so much if your hands are tired. You can just read it out and then you can go back and edit it later. So I suppose uh, you know, one of the first things I should do is just actually you know, demonstrate it for you. And one of the things you'll do when you, when you speak is you want to speak clearly and you want to speak in fluid speech. And you'll also want to tell it the punctuation because it doesn't know where to put commas and periods. It's, uh, in fact, putting the commas and periods in helps it to understand what you're saying. So speak in phrases. L let me demonstrate. Let me go ahead and turn it on. And I'm going to just talk like I am, period. And hopefully you will get to see how well it actually gets right what I am saying, period. I have some text over here that I'll read to you and see how well it does, period. New paragraph. When dictating, you need to speak clearly and naturally, period. You must be consistent and avoid words like um and ah, period. <laughs> Click on that to turn it off. So you got a chance to see how well that actually does work. And it says, you know, when dictating, you need to speak clearly and naturally. You must be consistent. It seems like it got it pretty well on the mark there. Uh, you can see the accuracy of this is pretty good. In fact, I'd say my typing errors are more common than this thing has errors in recognizing what I'm saying. It takes a little while to get used to saying comma, period, but after a while, that just becomes second nature to you. It's kind of like you don't think about typing period. You know, you just 
kind of do it. And eventually your brain gets kind of wired for that and, and, and it works real well for you. And again, you can, you know, you can import into programs like, you know, Microsoft Word. Again, you can turn that on and, and, and import into those. The quick reference card that they give you can be a big, big plus because the quick reference card gives you <clears throat> some nice uh, bits of information regarding, uh, you know, little, little commands that you can use. New line, scratch that. So if you say something that was wrong, uh, I didn't mean to say that. Just say scratch that. You say scratch that again and it'll go back and delete what you said before that. And I usually cluster little phrases based upon the pauses that you gave in your speech. So anyway, this is kind of handy to have this handy. It's nice to have a printed out version that you can, um, that you can, you know, reference. Now this program is ideal for typing, not so great for editing. You can, it gives you commands in here where you can edit, but the reality is it's kind of convoluted to do it that way. You can do it. So if you're someone who's a quadriplegic and you aren't able to, you know, do much with your hands, then this could still be something you can still even edit if you want to go back in and insert a word and things like that. You can do it. But you'll find most of us will be able to type a little bit here. But this will save you a lot of typing and you can probably speak faster than you can actually type. So this might be a life saving grace for you. However, you do have to be in a quiet environment. You don't have to be in a studio, but you do need to be in a quiet environment free from background noises that can throw the thing off a little bit. Um, as well as it's not real private. So if I'm sitting here and typing an IM saying, I hate my job, I hate the president or whatever, everyone's going to hear what you're saying because if they're nearby. So it may not be as private as actually typing. So just be aware of that. Um, otherwise, it's a great program. And like I say, it's available for Mac, Mac as Mac Speech. It's available on PCs. It's called Dragon Dictate. And so th this is going to be great resources uh, for you, I think, uh, to try out. And now, you may say that's a lot of money to spend to try this out and see whether I'd really like it. Well, if you've got a lot of typing to do or if you have some arthritis or things like that, this could be helpful to you. But you don't have to necessarily spend money, okay? Because what I want to tell you about is this comes on the iPad. There's a drag and dictate for the iPad and it's absolutely free right now. It doesn't cost you anything.